Good evening, folks. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 14 of Coast to Coast Outdoors. I am your host, Jeff McNeil, and today we have Skylar Jador uh, from Escazoni uh, First Nation in Unamagi, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, fishing the Bador Lakes. Uh, uh, I didn't have a detailed bio for, uh, for Skylar, but uh, Skylar can tell us a bit about himself. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, Clifford uh, Paul had to, uh, a family emergency last minute he had to attend to. So he may chime in throughout the show. Uh, so uh, fingers crossed that we can get Clifford in. So welcome to the show, Skylar. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to be on. That's wicked. Uh, do you got video there, Skylar, where you're at? or? Uh, no. Okay. So I'm, just, just I'm currently on my... Yeah, I'm currently outside. Gotcha. Okay. No, truck, yeah. no, no worries. Uh, that I might have had uh, uh, some uh, video feed there as well, but uh, no biggie. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Skylar. Uh, what, uh, like, uh, what, what got you into fishing? Jeez. Um, when I was like five years old, I went with my uncle Simon. Uh, we went fishing in Island View. We we're catching codfish. That was the first fish I ever caught. It was the cods. They were so plentiful back then. So we're just mostly doing catch and release. And that got me hooked to fishing. And it was the white kagama bed thing when I was around maybe seven years old when there was a big escape that happened. Just like today, right? And um, that got me into the trout fishing. Then I started to learn more about the trout back home here in Escazoni. And once the cod fishing kind of slowed down, then we had more and more trout. Gotcha. But, um, yeah. And I've got a photo here up there. I scanned through a few of the photos there of uh, both you and Clifford. And uh, I had one in there, Trent and Clifford's uh, grandson. Uh, I've got one there, one of the cod fish that you got there. Uh, now, Skylar, that was caught in the Bedore Lakes, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, that was caught last year. That's pretty recent. Well, wow. last season, yeah. And, and for, still... those... Go ahead. For, for, for those folks that don't know the Bedore uh, Lakes, obviously, because we got viewers from all over, uh, the that is part of a biosphere, uh, uh, I believe, as well, is it not, Skylar? Yeah, it's part of um, a biosphere reserve. Uh, I don't know how long it's officially been like a biosphere reserve, but that's what it is now. <laughs> gotcha. Well, uh, a few questions here, obviously. Uh, I'm going to just move away from the photos here. Uh, so, obviously... Uh, uh, we're, we're discussing the Bedore Lakes, and we, you mentioned there the Waikagama uh, uh, steelheads, or uh, as some people refer to them as uh, the rainbows. Uh, I, I guess I'm comfortable to say that they're a, a pretty decent fighting fish, uh, would uh, would you say? I, I see a lot of photos there with a lot of people uh, catching some decent size uh, uh, rainbows or steelheads in that area. Oh, yes, yeah. They're a lot of fun. Like, um, it really brings a lot of attraction, um, like, from around here. Like, last year, or last December, I, I met up with a few people from Quebec and Newfoundland and New oh, Brunswick wow. coming over to fish for them, yeah. And there were okay. so many, it just wouldn't have any days skunked out there. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of people are uh, actually... Uh... Uh, I know uh, there were some issues there with traffic and other issues, obviously, and uh, it's uh, it's it's been a huge attraction. That uh, nonetheless, now uh, uh, since since one side of the bay has been closed there in a variation order, obviously, have you guys uh, seen much more traffic on the other side of the bay that where it's open? Uh, yeah, today I drove by. There was, geez, I wouldn't want to exaggerate. Maybe like. 30 cars, but they were all scattered all over the place. So uh, there's really a decent amount of places uh, 
you can fish. It's not like how it was before with like the whole 50 car lineups right at right on the reserve. Huh? Yeah, there was uh, there was quite a, quite a few uh, people that were enjoying it and uh, catching some big ones, and they're still to this day uh, catching big ones all over uh, the Bedour, Believe it or not, uh, which uh, w- which is a good. Uh, good thing to get people and their children out obviously and enjoying that nature and that uh what uh what areas now you don't have to give away obviously uh the honey holes uh but uh what uh what areas would offer a good chance for somebody just getting into it uh uh to to possibly catch a fish on the bedore like scholar i would look for um like a cove that would be like that would shelter from the wind um, where you got eel grass on the bottom or fine sand where you could see sand shrimps and all kinds of bait, bait fish activities. Look for places where it's nice and calm. And if you could see fish breaking, then that, that would be a, a part where I would choose. But um, I've caught fish pretty much um, anywhere along East Bay. You could be right in the open middle of may to mid-june oh, wow. just choose a spot and you can just hook them up hook up with fish they're kind of all over the place now once they move out of the barishwa ponds then you can catch them pretty much anywhere along the beaches perfect now uh now i know a lot of people there that they have the the debate whether or not fly fishing yields bigger fish and uh it's uh it's easier uh Tell us a little bit there on what you would say. Uh, I know you're an avid fly fisher, obviously, and uh, the fact there that uh, you've, I, I, I guess I should say you've pretty much mastered the technique with both the spinning reel and uh, the fly rod. So so what type of gear would somebody need for uh, a fly rod uh, aspect, Scholar? I would start off with a six-weight rod, um, like a nine-foot, nine-and-a-half 10 feet maybe, uh, or a seven for like light winds to moderate winds and eight would be on the high side for like windy days and weight forward line, um, floating line is fine. And I like using sink tips, uh, airflow poly leaders in either eight foot or 10 foot in length, uh, any density from clear intermediate right to fast sinking and maybe like a 5x to 4x tippet, three to four feet in length. Um, a saltwater kind of reel maybe uh, with a disc drag. They're a little quieter. Um, that'll be pretty much what I would start off with. doesn't have to be a super fancy rod, but uh, a more high performance rod would give you a letter better punch in the wind if you are if you're doing like tight loops gotcha now uh now fly types uh let's say for the speckled what would you prefer for a speckled there uh when you're fishing the very first fly i would tie on when when the fishing season starts is to make you fin it could be the silver bodied or the gold bodied um they both work really good and this year i've caught all species of trout on the mickey fin <laughs> pretty good ones too uh, yeah I've, uh, I've brought one of the it looks like one of the waikagama bay uh steel heads up there uh and uh the fly rat right over your shoulder obviously so so you uh you, you've mastered landing some big ones uh now uh if they were going after uh, uh i guess the mickey fin would work just the same uh for the 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 steelheads as it would for a speckle, would it not? Yeah, the, um, yeah, anything, they'll grab anything. But for those fish, um, like the one I'm holding there, I like to use um, like buck bugs or bombers. Um, another fly I like to use are blobs. I guess they imitate um, the feed that they get when they're in the cages. So anything that's round, uh, that has like a, kind of a buoyant body that you can sink with a stink tip mm-hmm. just give it under the surface and they'll go after that oh, wow. but uh you can catch them with anything like shrimp flies and woolly buggers you throw you probably throw a stick with a hook on it you probably <laughs> catch one 
<laughs> now, uh, now the stripers. I know some guys say they catch the stripers in the Bordeaux Lakes as well, the striped bass, and uh, some guys say, yeah, uh, the add one they'll catch. Uh, uh, fly rad for that. What would work for that, Skyler? Uh, uh, for uh, for one there. For the uh, stripers, the claws are minnow. It's um, it's very tough to beat. It's it's a good fly to use um, where there's current. For the best places to find striped bass, I find, are um, on the openings of uh, like the ponds, Barishwa ponds, or any like a fast flowing inlet. Mm -hmm. So you throw a clouser minnow in there late evening or early morning, he'll have a chance of catching striped bass. Oh wow! Now uh, the the photo there that I had up there of you with the codfish. Uh, just curious to, uh, what you used for that this one here. Um, I used a uh, high-low rig I made up with um, eight o octopus hook and uh, chunks chunks of mackerel, and you oh, just wow. bounce them along the bottom. That's or you nice. use, um, what do you call it, like a cannonball sinker, maybe like an eight ounce or a drill sinker. And you just really drag it along the bottom and you just let the drift pick up your bait and they'll just follow the scent and grab it. Uh, mackerel jigs work and cod jigs. But that that one there I caught on live bait. So oh, wow. that works really good. So let's let's switch gears here a little bit and switch over to uh, the talking there about uh, the spinning reels. I know, like I said, you're well-versed on boat styles. Uh, uh the, the spinning reels, what would you say for the, the speckles and the, the, the rainbows or the steel heads uh, on that, like line weight, uh, uh, style of uh, maybe Rapella, if that works, or is, are you guys just going with the standard Hildebrand with a six or eight inch leader uh, off of that? Uh, tell us a little bit about what you'd say for that, Scholar. Yeah, I'd start off with um, like a 2,500 size real uh 10 pound test i like to use power pro and i tie a fluorocarbon leader on the end mm -hmm. and yeah hildebrandt works pretty good you just um you make a little um like a mono leader maybe six to eight inches in length and you put a hook on the end and a, and a worm that's pretty good for the sea speckled trouts and like early season, uh, when the ice comes, I lost you, Skyler. Your mic went on mute. Can you hear me, Skyler? Well, I lost Skylar there. I know Skylar was having some connection issues here, so just bear with us a minute there. We have Skylar back. Welcome back, Skylar. Oh, it's um, hold on, it's quick. There you go. I can hear you now. Okay. Oh, it's yeah, kind of. Kind of, kind, of, kind of cut out there for a minute, Scholar. Yeah. Where was I? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, early season, um, I would switch to the spoons. Mm -hmm. Maybe like um, the Sidewinder or the Little Cleo. Those um, Lucky Strike Rainbows. Um, somewhere around 3.8 three, eight sounds. Mm-hmm. And for Repellas, I like to use um, the X Wrap number eight or the Shadow Wrap uh, number 11 or number seven. And I think and, I've got a couple of pictures here of uh, some, uh, some of the equipment both you and Clifford may use, obviously. Uh, there's one here, uh, looks like a, a smelt. Uh, uh, would that be the F11, Skylar? Or the F12? Um, that's the Shadow Wrap. Uh, SDR11. Oh, okay. That's a slow sinker. Um, yeah, that's that's probably the best one to use nowadays. Really? 
And um, they also make a number seven. Uh, I I got into that last year. Um, but they're sold internet on international uh Rapala website. Okay. So maybe like um, eBay has them for sure, and they ship them from Singapore. But uh, I found I had a lot of luck with that in Olive Green. I don't know uh, if, I can, if you can find a picture of that somewhere. No, I, I've got a picture of these two here, uh, Rapellas, it looks like. Uh, uh, the Shadow Rat, maybe, and uh, the other one is a, a bright neon color, if you can see it there. Oh, yeah. Th that's one of the best ones to use, that, um, the Fire Tiger. And that one works for any species, I guess, on the Bredore Lakes, eh? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to trout. Uh, just bear with me here as I switch over here. Uh, so, yeah, so I guess that covers off uh, most of the, the different uh, types of uh, methods, uh, both spinning and, and uh, fly uh, for gear for even a beginner and somebody newly seasoned, obviously, to uh, take part. Uh, now, uh, I know we touched on areas. You said the, the coves and that outside the estuaries and bearish wild ponds and that uh, seem to be very good for, uh, for areas for people to hit. Now, a lot of people, for some reason, prefer power bait. Now, I've always been either a live bait guy, either with a uh, worm or night crawler and, and uh, for, for rigs and that, like the rappellas and that. Uh, what, what, what do you find works best or what... Uh, what I guess times a day would uh, would better better work early morning for the night crawler and the worm, power bait through the whole day, your repellas, or or does it really not matter, Skylar? Um, right when the sun's before the sun comes up, I like to use the lures. Then um, when the when we get a little more light, then that's when the power bait goes out. Gotcha. Now, the I know we touched on uh, the the gear, obviously. Uh, touched on what works for the beginners, obviously. Uh, what times a day would you say, Skylar, or prime time for the for the fish? Early morning or late evening, or for the rainbow or the speckled, or or even striped bass. I know striped bass has a season in itself, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do you figure there would work uh, for the average person just getting into this and not really knowing what would be a, a good time of day to go fishing? Morning is the best. Early morning, uh, right? Yeah, early morning. Now, does it matter? Would, would a person prefer fishing from land? Like yourself or boat, what's what would be uh, an asset for the viewers here to uh, to pick up and uh, try to uh, the, the follow on? Obviously, boat would probably be the best um, because you there's all kinds of places that you can go where you can easily get to, um, like access wise and stuff like that, but. And I know you mentioned access wise and uh, like I'm familiar with uh, around the Bredore Lakes uh, for the most part. And, and there's not very many spots to, to maneuver a boat and trailer or even uh, public launches there. Uh, obviously, I guess uh, the Bedeck Marina, you could probably launch there uh, quite possibly. I don't know if they charge or not, but uh, I, I don't know many spots, Skylar, for the average person to launch a boat. Uh, do, do, do you have any spots there that maybe even I don't uh, I don't know about that are open to the, the public to, to launch a boat? Yeah, you can launch a boat, um, Little Narrows, um, by the by the ferry on the Iona side. I know um, if you're fishing for the Waikagama Bay, that's a good option. Uh, there's a couple more on the on the Portage Road there, too, um, that you can launch a boat. Uh, you'll see the cars where where the trailers are parked, where the boat trailers are. Gotcha. Um, 
it's just really uh, you got to find good parking. Sometimes they take up pretty much the whole area to park and um, it'd be kind of tricky to maneuver your boat trailer to get back to the launch. <laughs> and um, if you're doing the River Denny's Basin, there's this one spot where you cross the bridge. Um, geez, I don't know what the area is called. It's, it's close to Malaguach anyways. Um, and East Bay Sandbar, um, there's two spots there. You can launch on either side. Mm -hmm. um, they just recently fixed one of them. I think it was in December. Okay, and that's a sure. public one. Uh, I'm really not too familiar with the um, St. Peter's area. Gotcha. No, well, hey, that uh, that gives uh, at least some of our viewers a, a handle there on a few spots they can launch anyway. Obviously, parking is uh, at a premium uh, to, to find at the best of days uh, up there. Uh, a lot of people ask uh, with the with the steelhead trout in Waikagama Bay. Uh, uh, does the steelhead trout in uh, Waikagama Bay compare with fight and taste to a wild rainbow? Now, I've I've eaten both, and uh, I I don't really see much of a difference myself. Skyler, how about you? Um, a wild rainbow is much fat, much much quicker. Uh, they're more agile. You get bigger jumps and everything. But the ones in the White Kagama, uh, they've been they've been roaming around for a bit and I, I guess they picked up pace because um, I still get pretty good battle saw to them. They strip your drag and the bigger they are the harder they fight. But if I were to compare both of them it's really not not much of a difference. Gotcha. You know what? Uh, I, I hear that from a lot of people there that uh, they find that there's not much difference flight wise. Uh, uh, I know Skylar, you're part of the what uh, what Clifford and many of you fellas uh, in, in your little group call uh, the Hardcore Crew, uh, which are uh, I want to call you guys dedicated anglers when it comes to the Bredor Lakes because you guys. You guys are at it all the time. I see Kendall Hutchins out there a lot. I see yourself. I see Clifford. Uh, I see a few others like uh, Dan McCarthy and uh, 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 Tony Ludi. Uh, and, and there's many more that uh, I'm, I'm forgetting, obviously. But uh, I know there's a, a small group of you guys that make up that hardcore group. And, well, I'm, I'm surprised when I, when I see some of the photos of you guys with the fish you guys – you guys just slay them sometimes. It's uh, it's uh, it's 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 unbelievable. And uh, kudos to you guys for uh, for that because you guys are dedicated. Uh, and I know uh, I, I know Scholar, we haven't even touched on brown trout, and uh, a lot of guys are getting browns lately. And uh, uh, I don't know if you've uh, hit the brown trout recently for target species, but uh, tell us a little bit about the browns because I don't want to leave out the browns. Uh, there's, uh, there's many browns that are being caught recently in uh, specific areas around the Bredor Lakes, obviously, and and uh, elsewhere. And uh, tell us a little bit there what you would uh, tell somebody that wants to fish for a, a brown on either a fly or a spin reel. Uh, what uh, what may work for that, Scholar? For the browns, um, you gotta you gotta read the. Give them what they're looking for. Um, like, if you're to use a fly, I find the more natural your fly looks, the better the chance you're going to get the brown. They're really they're a very tricky fish to catch. Um, they're really smart. And um, you got to pick a really good day to catch them. You got to know when the browns are there. Um Sometimes I find they just come in schools. They come in schools of one, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you're to use like a fly rod, um, the best time to get browns would be right when the ice comes off. And like I said earlier, the Mickey Finn is just—it's a phenomenal fly. Um, it it must mimic the silver side because it has a. Like um, what do you call it? Uh, lateral line built into it, you know, the red stripe. Yes, yes. Um, or the 
shrimp flies that uh, Gord Osman makes. Those are wonderful. Uh, I caught a few browns this year on his shrimps, but mostly on his um, Mickey Finn. Uh, I caught one two weeks ago um, out this way. And it was, uh, I caught that on the Mickey Finn. It was He's like 23 inches. You had the picture up there earlier. Um, it's in the net, but that was my most recent. Uh, got some photos problem. here of Clifford and yourself, obviously. Uh, and again, for viewers that are tuning in, uh, unfortunately, Clifford had to uh, cancel due to a family emergency. Uh, actually, I've got a photo of Clifford's son trending up here now with a uh, striped bass. Uh, there's Clifford with uh, a brown. Uh, I don't know if this is the one that you're referring to here, Skyler, uh, with the brown. Or, uh, uh, no, it was more like a silver colored brown. Uh, this one, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's the one. That's my most recent fish I caught. Wow, uh, that one put up a good bell. You can see the Mickey fin on the reel there. Um, it has like the silver body. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I took the Mickey fin. Um, and I caught another one a couple weeks ago. Um, that was also nice on the Mickey Finn. I have to, it's on YouTube right now. And, and if, if anybody wants to see, if, take a look at that. Um, what, uh, what, what's your YouTube channel there for that, uh, Skylar? So I, I know you do a lot of GoPro videos and such uh, and uh, whatnot. So uh, let, let our viewers know what your uh, YouTube channel is so they can check out some of your awesome videos. Um, yeah, just search Skylar Jidor. It's, um, that's that's the name of my channel right as of now. Anyways, I haven't really decided to make any like channel channel yet. But um, yeah, if you look up Skylar Jador and you go to the videos, it'll give you an updated list of um what kind of fish I caught. And on the playlists, you can see either there's like um, categories where I caught fish on live bait with spinning rod and there's like a fly fishing category ice fishing category and stuff like that so if you look at that you can see some of my fly fishing and bait fishing like how to's and stuff like that on the bridor and uh i'm just uh as you're talking there scholar i'm just uh bringing it up here for uh for users there so it's uh so it's in the embedded in this uh this podcast here oh we got clifford uh welcome aboard clifford uh great to have you buddy yeah i just um i just can't seem to hear you guys too well hold on i'm going to try to connect with my laptop okay clifford thank you well, uh so uh i'm just going to bring this up here uh uh skylar and uh share this uh screen here so people can actually see your uh your YouTube uh, channel. Uh, okay, so I think it should be shared up here now. Is it, guys? I've got Clifford back here. So, Scott, yeah, uh, I've, I've got your YouTube channel up here, obviously, uh, for our viewers to uh, check you out and check out your many videos out on the Bredor, ice fishing, huge rainbows, to uh, to uh, your your techniques and everything that you have there, uh, fish wise. And, uh, you've got, geez, you've got an impressive background, Skylar, when it comes to fishing. So for, for our viewers out there that want to check out Skylar, uh, Jador, uh, just go to YouTube and type in Skylar Jador. Uh, it's, it's in our, our video here as well. Uh, check it out. Uh, he's, uh, he's got an impressive, uh, line up there. Uh, we do have uh, uh, a couple of viewer uh, comments here. Uh, uh, Roger Lewis, uh, I don't know Skyler, but he sure seems to know his stuff. Thanks, Roger. Uh, Lloyd Moore, uh, good job, Skyler. Uh, Roger Lewis, informative, good chat. So, Clifford, can you hear us now? Can you hear us now, Clifford? Uh, I've got Clifford here somewhere, uh, unless I've had uh, a connection issue. Uh, 
Yeah, well, we'll we'll try we'll we'll try to get Clifford back here. It seems like he froze up on the live feed. Uh, the joys of uh, doing stuff uh, live, obviously. So yeah, Skyler, uh, very impressive here uh, on your YouTube channel. Uh, so our viewers can check you out there and uh, go through a lot of uh, different uh, videos. And I hear, uh, sounds like I hear Clifford beeping back in here. Hey, Clifford, how you doing? I got no audio from you, Clifford. Your mic is muted, Clifford, down in the right corner. Can you hear us now? You with us, Clifford? Your mic is muted, Clifford. <laughs> uh, on the screen there. Okay, I think I got you now. Nope. We've got a few audio connection issues with Clifford, so uh, we've got we've got we've got Clifford's uh, video, but we've got no audio from him. So let's see. Here. Check your mic setting, Clifford. On my end here, it's showing that you're muted. Where your name is, you should see a little uh, mic box. If you click that, it should uh, should unmute. We've got some connection issues, folks, with Clifford there. So bear bear with us. And I'm sure Clifford will be back here shortly uh, to get in on the, the conversation, obviously. So, hold on. We've got Clifford here again. Hey, Clifford. How's that now? Perfect. We've got you there now. So, okay, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. Welcome to the show, Clifford. Yeah, we just had a little scare there. Oh, it's got everything taken care of. That's the main thing. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, so Clifford, uh, I had the, the photos up, obviously, here, and uh, Skylar's been great to answer many questions. Uh, maybe you can chime in on some of the your techniques on the, the Bredore Lakes, obviously. Uh, uh, tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit first, Clifford, how you got started with, uh, with uh, the whole fishing aspect of uh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, when I was a little uh, little boy there, uh, my parents would visit um, relatives in uh, Escazoni, mm -hmm. right on Castle Bay Road. And I would uh, spend my time uh, fishing and observing uh, the uh, ecosystem there. It's where... Uh, the Bredore empties into uh, the pond there, mm -hmm. and it it was a uh, world class fishing over there. I would uh, catch cod every cast, take some home, give, give it to family. I would uh, see the big dark cloud in the water, and it'll be it'll be out 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 there, and. Um, We'd watch the cloud come into the mouth of that pond, and it'll go back out, come back in, and then all of a sudden they'll make a mad rush right through that channel, and it'll be millions of uh, gas bro. And uh, as a kid, I used to jig them and uh, sell them to uh, some of the uh, elders there who were uh, using them for bait and they really overpaid us <laughs> 10 cents a fish or three for a quarter. You know, I think they were doing us a favor as kids 
and promoting uh, a fishery. So I grew up um, spending lots of time on the Bredouin. I grew up uh, going to Chapel Island in Woodlodeck every year. And some years I would take my fishing rod and I would uh, see a lot and observe a lot of uh, nature. So the Bredouin to me is the lifeblood of uh, Unamagi. It's the heartbeat of our nation. Um, from there, we've learned that um, this is our home. This is uh, where we, uh, the creator provides food and the pre creator also uh, gives us a sense of uh, uh, the connectedness, I guess, belonging, you know. We know our sense of place when we're anywhere along the Bredor. So from a childhood, I've been very uh, fascinated with, with fishing, marine life, and uh, that grew into uh, wildlife. So I'm really a very lucky person to be born in Unamagi and to also have access to still today a world-class fishery. And, and that's for sure, Clifford. Uh, the Bredore Lakes is uh, is well well known uh, for uh, for the fish and uh, that uh, a lot of people have there, obviously. And uh, it's uh, it's part of like me and uh, Skyler mentioned there before uh, earlier on. Uh, the the Bredore Lakes is part of the biosphere, uh, which is under UNESCO, I believe. Uh, uh, which which in itself uh, makes it very unique because of the biodiversity that is found in the Bedore Lakes. Uh, largest saltwater lake in, I want to say, Nova Scotia, if not Canada. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's something there that's uh, unique. It, it, as you said, there's, there's lots there. It, uh, there's, there's eels, there's brown trout, there's rainbows, there's steelheads, there's... Geez, the list goes on, Clifford. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's there. And you and Skyler are part of the hardcore crew, and and your your fishing tells the tales because your photos, anybody that follows you, Clifford, uh, like brown tail uh, with the browns to the speckles. <laughs> yeah. to, I, I, I've got some photos up here uh, of both you yeah. and Skyler, and uh, and it's like. Wow, you guys just know how to, to nail them. Now, earlier today, before you come on the podcast, obviously you were out fishing, and I know you've uh, you've hit a, a few dandies as well as uh, codfish over your uh, your fishing career in the Bedore Lakes. Uh, same with Skyler, obviously, and uh, it's it's unique. Uh, your grandson Trenton here with uh, a striped bass. Uh, now, I'm not sure. I don't believe that came from the Bedore Lakes, but uh, you could correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, no, we caught that in the uh, Shubenagadi River, where it, ch where it connects to the Stewiak. Gotcha. So we caught it just be beyond Stewiak there. And and the reason I threw that photo in there is because anytime you can pass that knowledge on to a younger generation, it's worth its weight in gold, obviously. And uh, yeah, and exactly. Um, for for uh, the transmission of traditional knowledge it uh, it shouldn't end with me skyler my elders um the hardcore crew it should always be continued so if, if we take the kids out fishing hunting observing nature um picking fiddleheads and berries and medicine the stories continue so if they carry on the traditions, they will tell the stories and they will say, I have been a part of this. Instead of saying, they used to do this, they used to do that. My papa and his friends used to do this. Mm -hmm. So you, the best, we always look to protect traditional knowledge and scholars will tell you that, uh, Per personal protection of knowledge is of prime importance. And I agree. 
But for me, I, I think the best protection of traditional knowledge is passing it on and make sure that it, uh, the stories continue. And you know what, Clifford, that's, uh, that's truly correct because like Skylar there, he's got them how to videos on YouTube, obviously. So he's, he's, he's passing his shared knowledge on to, to many others. Uh, I know, uh, I know you've shared your knowledge there with, uh, with, uh, Tony Ludi and, uh, Kendall Hutchins and them guys that are part yes. of the, p- part of the network there as well of anglers that, uh, are, are pretty dedicated when it comes to that, uh, so, yeah, so it it's it, it, it's a pass on it. Uh, it just doesn't end with uh, you or I or Skyler, and uh, it's uh, it continues on uh, throughout history. Obviously, uh, Clifford, what does like I, I know Skyler, uh, you're still on here with, with us, and uh, uh, a lot of these are probably going to be repetitive questions because Skyler has answered many of them uh, with his techniques, obviously. And I'm whatnot. glad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, what uh, what areas, Clifford? Then you don't have to be exact, but uh, would uh, offer uh, a good chance to catch a trout, uh, whether it be brown or speckled or uh, rainbow or steelhead, uh, on good. on the Bedore yeah. Lakes. You don't have to give an exact, but just a ballpark range. Some some people don't like giving their honey holes away, obviously, because. But uh, well, but, er, early in the season. We, uh, we like to throw out a uh, shadow wrap, uh, X wrap, and the new um, wrap, Rapala Ripstop. So we, we like to use those. Mm-hmm. And then as the season progresses, we uh, change into uh, baits. And we like to throw out uh, on a floater, uh, we like to throw out live minnows. Like I caught. Uh, a 19-inch wild speckle. Oh, no, sorry, a wild steelhead, and that hit a mama chub really hard, and I lost a big one there. And what we do there is we look for the shells where a shoal will go into a deep end, mm-hmm. and we will move our baits around there. Um, as the season progresses. A lot of anglers go into fly fishing. I re- I like to use I like to use bait. I would I would like to use those little sand shrimps and crawdads and uh, throw them out there on the float. And uh, I I I can't get into fly fishing. <laughs> I have OCD, mm-hmm. and uh, you can see it with my bass fishing and my trout fishing. I am so fully equipped. I have five of everything. So if I get into fly fishing, I won't have time for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> I see it. And because I have OCD, I'll have two or three of each. And I won't stop. And you know so. what, Clifford? Uh, it's, it's, I've got two or three fly rods. Actually, I've got three fly rods. And I've... It, you know what? I I find it embarrassing if I try to use them around people that are well versed on it because I'm the I'm then the rookie, right? And uh, it's uh, it's it's like, wow, I can't compete with some of these uh, older season veterans that uh, live and breathe uh, fly fishing, like Skyler and many others, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's like, a lifestyle, it, and it's it, an art form. It it is an art form, and it's uh, yeah. it's a technique you really have to master. Uh, yeah, exactly. I've, I've, That's I've why had, you don't see me curling as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had, I've had, some, I've had yeah. some seniors and elders and that try to teach me to, to, to use a fly rod and get the fly in a five gallon pail. Clifford, yes. I'm telling you, if uh, back then, uh, if, if they had had cameras on the phones back then, everybody would still be laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. Well, the but, thing is, as long as you put in the tune. Well, that's it. You know, pra- practice makes we, perfect. We, we use a lot of uh, respect for nature, respect for Mother Earth, respect for yourself, your family, your community. So if you go out there uh, with, with uh, good intentions and love in your heart, that's all that matters. And catching a fish will be just a bonus. Losing a fish is another story. 
<laughs> I lost three big fish in five days. Jeez. But I took home some nice ones for food. So I can't be greedy and I can't complain. Well, that's it, right? It's, uh, yeah. Uh, what type of gear, Clifford, uh, do you say for... Well, what type of gear, I guess, would be universal for a new person getting into the sport? Uh, whether it be for uh, speckled trout, rainbow, or uh, brown trout, uh, what would you say there, for, especially for the spinning rod techniques? Because I know you've got that spinning rod aspect down to a yeah. Uh, a system. I like using a uh, six and a half foot uh, light to medium action for trolling. I use a uh, medium heavy if I was going to target some. Um, striped bat schoolies and uh, this is the Bedora Lake now and I have a, a nine foot uh, rod that I cast out bait with. Um, you need um, for starters you need good quality um, if you're going to take kids up and you, you buy this little set it's all in, wrapped up in bubble plastic and all that I don't, I don't agree with that. Spend ten dollars more and get a good combo. Mm -hmm. Ten to twenty dollars more, because it changes um, the experience. Because uh, you'll end up untangling line, taking apart that closed spool, and trying to get that little fishing rod going, and the, the kids pick up on the energy. Mm -hmm. So you get. Start out with good equipment, good line. Um, the experience is that much more enjoyable. And uh, ever since I was a kid, um, my father encouraged me to get not just entry, get beyond entry level. And uh, this the fishery here is so important to us. So I have to get good equipment. And what I do is I wait for it to go on sale, just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and, I can't. I, I hardly pay full price. And, and if and I do, I, I tuck my tail between my legs and tell my friends, look what I got. I got a brand new system here. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, if somebody only knew how much we actually pay for some of that gear, eh? Now, uh, yeah. Uh, a, a little bird told me uh, the Waikagama Home Hardware uh, got a sale on Repellas up there. So I don't know if it's uh, fact or fiction, but. Uh, Somebody but, sent uh, me a picture. They were four ninety nine. dollars so, that's, that's a pretty yeah. decent deal, I'll say. So if I can't make it there, our buddy Kendall will, will probably have to drive by there for work. Yeah. So I'm going to ask him to make a stop. Perfect. And that's what we do. We watch out for each other. Skyler found me some nice gear on Amazon. Kendall found me some nice sales when he's in Moncton. Mm -hmm. And we have a good network. And we share our information. It's very important. Yeah. And it's it's funny you should mention Kendall because uh, actually uh, when I wanted to get uh, striped bass gear, uh, something I um, I had no gear for, obviously. That's uh, what I had. But I wouldn't want to try to haul one in because I'd probably break it. So, uh, Kendall set me up with some nice gear as well. So, so kudos to Kendall for the help on that. And it's just I haven't uh, I haven't found a time to get out with you guys, obviously. So, uh, someday oh, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, Skyler, but, uh, Skyler can tell you some great striped bass stories. <laughs> incredible, <laughs> the incredible fishing, Scott. Oh, um, I'm sure Skyler can. Skyler's uh, Skyler's proven it with uh, his his many uh, GoPro videos and and so forth. Uh, now I've got uh, a lure up there, Clifford. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's one of yours, I believe. Uh, uh, and uh, Skyler briefly touched on it there. Uh, Shadow wrap, is it? Shadow wrap, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a lethal uh, lure. Um, sometimes we would remove the center hook mm -hmm. and put a shorter tank hook in there okay. because um, mm -hmm. it wobbles and sometimes it, it wobbles into the other hook gotcha. for some strange reason it happens but it has incredible uh, action and uh, we found that uh, brown trout 
speckled trout, and maybe a few rainbows here and there. Mm-hmm. They they find it irresistible. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a really nice lure, mm-hmm. and I recommend if you're going shoot shoot from the shoreline, uh, throw as many casts as you can. Gotcha. Because eventually you'll get a hit. And uh, if you're, if it is a great lure for trolling as well. Okay. So now and Cliff- mix the speeds. Mix, mix the, the speeds. speeds. Even on, on one retrieve, mix the speeds a little bit. Let it stop for a second, pause, and pull it again. And uh, make it look like an injured fish, mm-hmm. an injured bait fish. And they, it, the big trout find it irresistible. Gotcha. So, so would you prefer the repellas over, say, power baits, worm, or night crawler, Clifford? Yeah, I, uh, you know, when we uh, we uh, unofficially put the herd crew core together from uh, meeting each other while bass fishing and meeting each other while brown trout fishing, so we shared our information and we we, we shared the value of uh, good lures, good spoons, and um, baits. And we've been fishing together for the last five years. And the social media will come back and tell us uh, in our memories, okay, here's where we caught some browns on the Myra. Here's what we use. So that's why you'll see us taking pictures of our, our gear. So it comes back to remind us. Because at my age, <laughs> things don't come back to remind me. It's uh, you know what I I, I got to take notes now, Clifford, and I'm not that yeah. Old, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, no, so that's, that's what brought us together. Because we we were the kind of guys to, who were who would go out fishing, and the women too, and we were hardcore. We would fish in all conditions, all different temperatures, and we'd be out there where it'd be so cold that it would take away, eat at your soul. And just when your soul's about to leave you, that rod starts shaking. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's what's hard for. Yeah. And, and you guys fish in all weather. Uh, Skyler and Clifford, I've seen you guys fishing in, in unbearable temperatures, ice fishing to deadly rainstorms. Uh, Geez, Clifford, I seen a photo of you there last year where uh, you were out uh, striped bass fishing on a beach in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, here's a secret. The, the striped bass, they love chaos. The bait fish are just slamming against rocks. They're slamming against the shore. The waves are in more control of their movement. Mm-hmm. And the striped bass, uh, they capitalize on that. We've caught world class uh, striped bass mm-hmm. in Kenya, but we won't do it alone. Uh, these places are dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll never go to a place at night that we haven't seen in the daytime, and we watch out for each other. The ride there and the ride back while we're fishing, make a fire, do our thing. We really watch out for each other. Now, I, I see a comment there from uh, Skyler. He said, Ghost Shiner. Uh, what's what's the story behind the Ghost Shiner? Yeah, go ahead there, Skyler. Yeah, that uh, lured Clifford had over there, um, the Ghost Shiner. That one, that one looks the most like um, the Atlantic Silver side. Yeah, that one there. You can see the, um, geez, I caught a lot of fish with that one. Including nope. striped bass. Now, th- th- that one there kind of gives the appearance of uh, either a smelt or a capelin, or uh, some some guys I know uh, want the silver side minnows, right? They don't want the chubs or the, the bullheads, obviously, for, for live bait. But uh, but that's uh, that seems to be the predominant thing I see a lot of guys going with now, obviously. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Um I find it's really good right until June. Usually um, the browns stop biting lures in like middle of May, but 
I find that one there. Hold on a second. We'll be right back, guys. Right? You, okay. you can keep getting the browns on it. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something, though. Uh, like, there's so much versatile and different uh, fishing gear a person can get. Like, if you walked into one of the big department stores, uh, even here locally, Scott, or like uh, our department stores, sometimes you can get, like, so flustered to the point where you don't know what gear to buy which uh which which some people find it intimidating right uh, uh, uh you, you see some guys going out and they buy everything that they can thinking that it's going to work and something so simple uh i don't know if you guys have ever used a uh, sidewinder but uh i know uh, a local lake out here where i'm at uh for the speckles and that side uh orange uh sidewinder it, it works yeah, better the, than a Hildebrand. Yeah, Acme uh, Sidewinder, I like to use it in um, early May. And I target the uh, run speckles. Gotcha. I catch a lot of C-run speckles with them. And then after a while, they move to another bay. They move to other areas. And they're not interested in them anymore. So that's when I have to switch. To live baits, yeah. Gotcha. For some strange reason, the River Denny system, our our Rapalas, our Shadow Wrap, and our um, Rip Stops, Rapala Rip Stops, the fish are not interested in them in there. But in the yeah. Bordeaux, like East Bay and other areas, they're after them like crazy. Yeah, so we we have to we have to learn and adapt and uh, mold our behavior to the feeding habits of the fish. True. Now, Clifford, what would you say would be the prime time for fishing with you guys? Oh, I lost you, Clifford. Uh, technical issue there with Clifford. Uh, hopefully, we get him back, Scott. Yeah. That's the that's the joys of live uh, on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he must have hit the space button or something. Yeah, he must have hit something. Uh, yeah. I've got a I've got a viewer comment here for when he comes back from Dylan Yates as well. So, well, and we got Clifford back. Welcome back, Clifford. Sorry about that. There was a thing that popped up. I pressed it, and it <laughs> took me off. No, no worries. What would you say would be the prime times for fishing? Uh, that you've noticed on the Bedore Lake? Uh, we were supposed to fish early this morning. And uh, I couldn't get up. And Kendall got up early and he called me, tried to call me and text me. I guess he went back to bed. So we went out around um, quarter after 10 this morning. Okay. And we figured, let's just do it anyway. We rattered the evening. But we, we had a great probably our best day out there uh, in a while. And, so uh, I think, this is I one think of it's more so your presentation um, that will uh, incite a, a game fish to strike because we had hard strikes. And um, what we were using was live minnow and uh, it worked well. And, so and, and I think this I could say prime today. time is at night. Which I love to do, just just the last uh, seventy minutes of daylight. Mm -hmm. I could say that works well, and it does. But today, for some reason, we had a west wind, and I don't use the wind. I just noticed it because I got I got wind burn on my face, a sunburn. It was cold. <laughs> we had choppy water, and uh, the fish were just hitting like crazy. That's awesome. I think this is from today, is it not, Clifford, this photo here? Yeah, that's a steelhead I caught using the, using the minnow, minnow rig. Okay. And uh, that fish was jumping like crazy. And uh, we even kind of had a little laugh because Kendall says, oh, it's one of the hatchery fish. But as it got closer, we can see all its fins out. So we knew it was a wild, wild rainbow. So it was a really nice uh, 
nice fish, and it was a great battle biting it. That's that's awesome. You know, it's great to see uh, that, Clifford. Uh, uh, I know I had a viewer comment here for you, Clifford. Uh, from, sure. Uh, D- Dylan Yates, uh, what's your favorite yep. fishing memory, Cliff? Oh, geez. Um, I guess um, when I was uh, growing up, um, I missed a lot of uh, traditional knowledge from my grandfathers. They were experts at what at fishing, mm-hmm. and they were uh, expert healers. But I have to say, um, the time that I was supposed to spend with them, uh, alcoholism um, that robbed robbed that those times from us. So I indirectly learned their knowledge from my dad, my older brother. Mm-hmm. And my uncle and aunts, and my best um, memories of fishing was when my dad bought me and my brother, and we had to share that Popeil pocket fisherman. <laughs> yeah, I'm that old. And we took it to Castle Bay Beach. Oh man, you wouldn't believe the cast. And we were reeling in cod after cod. And we caught about a dozen. And then my brother caught a big one. My younger brother mm-hmm. caught a big one. And the line snapped. Oh, wow. And the line got buried in that peel pocket fisherman. And for the life of us, we, we couldn't get it back out. So from there, we uh, went back to our traditional linen gear. So uh, that would be one of my best memories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we were kind of disappointed. But we learned a lesson. You need good equipment, man. How about you, Skylar? What would be your uh, favorite fishing memory? One time, um, me and my friends went fishing for the whole day in um, Benacadie Pond. And uh, geez, we must have been like 14 years old. And I snagged bottom five times, and I only brought five lures. <laughs> so... My friend, he loaned me his Sidewinder. You know, you were just mentioning that earlier. And um, and he told me, if you lose this, you'll have to pay me either like $3 or whatever, or a new Sidewinder. And anyways, the first cast I did, I snagged up. And I was able to let go, let go of it. When I reeled it in, the hook was damaged. So it only had two hooks onto it and um it was almost time time for us to leave um my friend's mother came, was on her way to pick us up and I just kept saying I'm gonna do one more cast one more cast and I cast it out then my my line got all tangled up <laughs> on my reel and um so the lure kind of I let the lure sink and my friend was like uh, you gotta get my you gotta reel reel my line in. It's like, I got to fix my reel first. Anyways, I gave up and I started pulling in his um, pulling in my line mm-hmm. so I can get his hook back. Anyways, I <laughs> I was hand lining something that felt really heavy and um, <laughs> then it didn't feel alive. So I knew, I thought I was hooked up to a branch or something and I was pulling and pulling and pulling <laughs> and well, what do you know? There's a big trout on the end, end of my line. <laughs> a monster. That's your luck, like Skyler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a 23-inch speckled trout. Oh, wow. It was half dead. I don't know what happened. He must have been... I must have been fighting that fish while I was trying to untangle. Anyways, I was able to bring that fish in by hand, and um, it, it came alive when I got it on land. Anyways, I took that fish home, and I told my grandfather about it, and we ended up cooking it up that night, but that was probably one of the craziest catches I ever caught, and it was like one of the last times that me and my friends at that age group went out that time anyway, so (laughs) we're always talking about that uh, fishing trip anyways, but that's my favorite memory of uh, fishing. That's that's something, and uh, that is a great story. uh, It's it's stories like that that make 
a fishing trip what it is. It, it doesn't matter most times if you catch something or not. It's the memories that you have to follow it, right? Uh, whether they're whether you lost the big one or you lost the small one, hey, it's 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 time enjoyed with family and friends and uh, getting out nature and uh, respecting things. Uh, it's uh, you, you, it's peace, it's quiet, the whole nine yards. So it's uh, it's it's memories like that that can't be bought, obviously. Uh, Clifford, uh, many people ask, uh, how does the steelhead trout in Waikagama Bay compare with fight and taste to uh, a wild uh, trout? Yeah, uh, what's your take on that? Obviously, uh, the wild trout is uh, has more flavor, and uh, we found that the best thing you can do with with the uh, the fishery the fishery ones. Mm-hmm. Is to uh, have it uh, filleted and smoked. Filleted I think smoked. that's the best justice you can do with a fish like that. So we have friends who have smokers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skyler has one. Tony has one. I'm, I'm waiting and for one of them. Uh, I'm waiting for Tony uh, to hook me up with one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we when we took Tony out, we 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 hooked it. Kendall caught a few of those and. Uh, we left them with him to smoke, and mm-hmm. we enjoyed that. We had that today. And last night, we had some last night. And, my God, that's the best justice you can do for a fish like that. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, an incredible food fishery. Um, we have young First Nation kids catching them, yes. taking them home, and their grandparents are serving up splendid meals with those fish. Mm-hmm. I would like to see... Every adult one of those was caught for that purpose, and for what and, they were intended. They were intended for food. Um, let them be caught for food. And and, and you know what, Clifford? Uh, just to, to elaborate on that, I I, I have eaten the ones from uh, from the bay up there. Uh, obviously, Chief Rad had hooked us up last year there with uh, with a, a pile there for an organization I was with uh, for uh, yeah. the Canadian Wildlife Federation. Uh, uh, meeting in Halifax that they had their uh, annual general meeting and uh, and uh, okay yes the, Clifford, wow they were maple glazed oh just just melt in your mouth right so it's uh yeah. it's, it, it, it was tremendous there and uh, I know for uh, for the few people that may have tuned in late into the, the game here uh, I, I'm going to be very clear and specific here that uh on the Waikagama or the Waco Bar Reserve side, uh, there is a closure on that through a variation order with the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans. So for those people that maybe come from a ways that uh, want to mm-hmm. come down here fishing from the mainland or elsewhere, obviously, uh, please be aware of that. Uh, there is a closure there and there is a closure for, uh, for boats as well around the Penn area. Uh, it's, use extreme caution and have respect for the area up there because uh, it's 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 the actions of a select number of people which bring on closures, unfortunately. And I just want to be very specific with that. Uh, it pack pack in if you're packing stuff in, make sure you pack it out. Uh, don't don't waste fish uh, if you're if you're not going to keep it, uh, release it. Uh, and, and be respectful, obviously, no matter where you're at on the Bedore Lakes, uh, because it's a value to everybody. It's a it's a sensitive ecosystem uh, with the biodiversity under the, the biosphere and and all that. So I just wanted to throw that into the, the mix here, guys, uh, just uh, just because we like anything, we've got bad apples on uh, all spectrums here. And uh, I just wanted it to be clear that it's not uh, a, a free for all, right? Uh, to go up there, park where you want, and do what you can. So just uh, be diligent, obviously, in the area and uh, respect the closure that's there, and be careful because fines would be handed out. Uh, so just uh, you use caution and make sure you do your due diligence uh, uh, on that, folks, for uh, fishing the Wakagama area, obviously. Uh, but uh, but guys. Uh, I wanted to put that out there because there's so many diverse people that listen to this either on the Facebook page or on 
uh, on our other platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. It's it's it, it's heard everywhere. So I just wanted to get that disclosure uh, out there to ex- use extreme caution when it comes to that. And if you're using a, a boat on the Bedore Lakes, uh, use your PFD, obviously. Uh, yeah. With, with you guys, do you guys have anything else uh, you guys may want to add? To anything fishing that maybe we had not touched on, or even you, Skyler, uh, anything there that uh, you guys want to pop in and and uh, inform the viewers? You can go first, Skyler. Still there, Skyler? Well, it, it, it's saying he's here at Clifford, but. Uh, He's uh, he must be stepped away for a second. Yep. Oh. I would just say, uh, treat treat Mother Earth with respect. Treat the Bedore with uh, utmost respect. Um, the food we get from the Bedore is is top of the line, world class. And you know, in our communities, First Nation and non First Nation, especially in Cape Breton, the child poverty rates go from 35% to 76%. So if we go out there with good intentions, loving our hearts, and treat the birds, the mammals, the fish, and the insects with, with respect, it comes back to you. And um, share, share knowledge, share the beauty of our ecosystems, and share the food. For sure, and uh, that's something there that uh, a lot of people may not be versed on is the child poverty rates around here. Uh, it's, exactly. It's, it's very unfortunate, and uh, it has to be addressed uh, in some way, shape, or form. How about you, Skylar? Uh, you got any last words there you may want to put out that we may not have touched on? Oh, yes, yeah. Do you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can play. hear you. Oh, yes, yeah. I always... um. Every time I go fishing, I bring a garbage bag over and um, with me. Um, if I'm not fishing for food, then I usually walk around my fishing spots and look for any trash that might be in the water or like beer cans that might be left behind and old monofilament fishing line that can harm the animals and stuff. Just make sure that if, you, if you're going to a, a filthy place, make sure you come out um, make make it clean, right? Doing your part and making the fishing spot more enjoyable and everything. And that would probably be my main tip for respecting the area, the Bador Lakes and the ecosystem we have. No, I, that's uh, that's well said, Skyler. Uh, anybody that can uh, clean up and uh, can contribute to that uh, as well uh, is it, very helpful, and it uh, it makes all anglers look uh, look very well and uh, not paint it with the same brush. Obviously, uh, you know what, guys, I appreciate you guys all coming on, uh, Skyler. Uh, you coming uh, you coming on from uh, Escazoni First Nation in uh, Cape Breton and. And Clifford, you coming on from member two, uh, you guys are dedicated uh, fishers. Um, and and for those viewers that may not know, uh, Escazoni is the largest of the 13 reserves in Nova Scotia. And and member two is, I guess, one of the, the biggest uh, with uh, e-commerce uh, and businesses and entities and everything. Uh, like they're, they make up uh, two of the... Th- the five uh, reserves in uh, Cape Breton, and uh, they are two, both uh, individuals represent each one in the respected territories of Unamagi, uh, Cape Breton, obviously, and uh, you know what, guys, your your knowledge, your wealth of uh, information that you guys provide people on a daily basis is huge, and uh, I hope to get both of you gentlemen back again to uh to have some more of the hardcore crew guys like uh kendall and uh maybe uh uh tony uh 
a few others if you guys want, uh, and, and we can do a panel discussion just on fishing if uh, if that works for you guys. Sure, that sounds good to me. When we're in the heart of a striped bass fishing, mm -hmm. um, be nice to have a little discussion on that, and to continue um, with more of the bedore as well. Perfect. You know what, guys? I'm I'm receptive to that idea, and uh, I'm hoping to to move it forward uh, uh, whenever uh, the chance it gives an opportunity. Uh, just let me know, and uh, you guys got my contact information, so. So feel free to reach out at any time. But again, uh, on behalf of Coast to Coast Outdoors uh, and you guys touching on the fishing on the Bredore Lakes, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure our viewers uh, do as well. So, so with that, Great guys. Stuff. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Skyler. Thanks for being our guests. And uh, thank you again, Skyler. And thank you again, Clifford. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, Unless anybody wants to say anything else, uh, uh, I'll give you guys the last uh, word there. If not, uh, we can close out. All right. I'm thanks uh, for having me, Jeff. Thanks, Cliff. And um, we'll see you the next time we have that panel. Perfect. I appreciate it, Scholar. Thanks again. All right. See you guys later. See ya. All right. Bye. All right take care. See you, Cliff. Thank you. Uh Well, all in so uh guys there you have it uh for those viewers that have tuned in there today uh uh we are uh hour and 16 minutes in we had some technical difficulties with the live feed obviously but uh nothing major uh clifford did make it on the show uh and uh we we do appreciate clifford uh and all clifford's knowledge and input as well as skylar's uh so again no Thank you to both Clifford Powell from uh, Member 2 and uh, Scholar Jador from Escazoni, Cape Breton, uh, to, uh, on coming on today and speaking about fishing the Bedore Lakes. Uh, to our, our many viewers uh, from coast to coast, uh, uh, whether it's uh, the east coast of Canada to the west coast of Canada, uh, up north, uh, United States, even over in Europe, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate everything. Uh, that you guys have done so with that that concludes episode 14 of coast to coast outdoors and stay safe while boating guys and gals uh, enjoy uh, what the week has in store thank you and see you again